Price, uh, tell us a little bit about your film. My film is called uh, Propaganda, The Art of Selling Lies. And it's, it's a film, basically, it's both about art and about propaganda and the history of, of, of... It's quite a broad history. It starts with cave drawings sort of positing the idea that in a way they, there's a propagandistic aspect to it but it goes right through history to present day um, and we interview a lot of people around the world Ai Weiwei is actually in it okay. and, and um, Shepard Ferry the man who did the uh, Obama Hope poster uh, Jim Fitzpatrick, the man who created the 1968 Che Guevara poster, which is probably the most famous icon propagandistically in the 20th century. And, and I interview priests in, the, in Florence, and, and like it's a whole range, a, a right-wing artist. It's a big range of people who have dealt with propaganda, who are propagandists themselves. And then there's a lot of political content as well. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a broad film, but it's character driven. Did you? How did you pick your subjects? And did you did you try to have like a, a sort of like blueprint of what you wanted to attack, or did the, did numerous other subjects just come up about? I, I worked with um, uh, some very good producers and 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 people who helped me write the film and research who who and we we discussed this a lot of who to choose because when you do something like propaganda, there, you could interview like fifty thousand different people. Uh, as it is, there's about 30 interviewees in the film, and it's it's a very curated thing in terms of we wanted a range. So uh, we speak to a psychoanalyst who do, who talks about. It. We talk to a philosopher. We talk to journalists. We talk to we talk to a range uh, painters, poster artists, um, uh, anthropologists, archaeologists, people who just have been thinking about propaganda a lot. It, it's um, how did we choose? We just had sort of this fantasy list of, of who we would like to go after mm -hmm. and then we approached a lot of people. Some people said no and sometimes that was a blessing in terms of because yeah. I'm very happy with who's in the film. Yeah. How does this um, film relate to you in the world that we live today in terms of like the social media and how um, that's dividing a lot of people and then uh, of course uh, propaganda from both like maybe like the left and the right are, are using um, yes. propaganda to their advantage. Uh, maybe you can uh, uh, sort of comment on that. Well the film is very much looking forward to the present day and the situation now. Um, you, the, the, the stars of the film are not just uh, people back in cage drawing. It, it's, I mean, obviously there's a Hitlerian aspect of propaganda and Stalin, but I'd say Donald Trump is one of the, I, I would say, and this is a crazy thing to say, but I would say Donald Trump was my muse for this film. I would wake up in the morning, I'd read his latest tweets, they would infuriate me, and I would, and, and so much so that I, I would creatively start writing narration or manifestos yeah. of what this film is about. So, so um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot about social media and the dangers of social media and social media as a, as a device that ends up spreading hate about, and genocide. Yeah. And, and, you know, these little innocent, oh, Facebook, Facebook, it's yeah. for loved ones. That's how, they, that's how it's positioned. Yeah. But, but it's not that. It's, it, it's something that can cause this, the silos and the echo chambers, and they can be echo chambers and silos of hate and hatred. And that's, that's a big theme in the film, for sure. Can you tell us uh, how you wanted to perhaps make this film uh, more, um, um, f more for the young people to understand what is actually going on in terms of propaganda? I, th I think the film is very much about contextualizing um, propaganda as potential mind control, and it, it doesn't leave any. It, I try not to leave too many stones unturned. Um, uh, it talks about how, how gullible we are, how we start believing things that we never would have believed. And I'm talking about politics, I'm also talking about religion, about the, the illogicalness of religious belief, and yet we're fed these things by propaganda machines via the churches and various religious organizations. And, um, and we just are fed lies from the moment we're born. And, and we're trained, we're trained, to, we're conditioned to believe things. And so, you know, we believe that an invisible God exists. We believe that Coca-Cola tastes good. It doesn't. There is no God, and, and Coca-Cola doesn't taste good. But we are fed propaganda, and that's... I do mention God in the film. I don't mention Coca-Cola. I have to be fair. I, I want to be careful about Coca-Cola. I'm not, I'm not scared of religious things, but I am scared about corporations. Um, no, I... I 
I think that it's it's a good film for young people. It's going to be used in the educational program at and Hot Talks, um, and and I think it's a it's. It's a good way just to get your radar out about what we're fed and how to make objective judgments about what we should be listening to and what we should be repelling. There's a lot, by the end, there's a lot about integrity and about truth. Truth is a big theme in this film because we're, set, we're fed so many untruths and, and, and how that's got to change.